Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we are going to be looking at editing hair, and in particular, just two of the methods that you could employ to perhaps clean up hair or add more hair to an image. Depending on the image you're creating, hair can be one of the features that takes the longest to edit. And in some cases, your usual methods of creating hair, and especially with the new methods of AI, it can result in some quite weird effects and perhaps not to the type of effect that you want. Now there's quite a few different ways that you can do this and to refine it and as you'll hear in the video itself I highly recommend if you're doing anything like this to use a tablet to do this because you get the pressure of the pen and the hair flies away you get a nice soft edge to it as well so if you're ever doing this to get the best results you definitely need a tablet because the pen pressure works brilliantly so Without further ado, I'm going to dive into the two, two of the methods that I use. There are plenty more, but these are two of the methods that I use and I have edited these using a mouse and completed the entire edit using a mouse, although I would recommend a tablet. For this method, we're going to create a new document and this document, the size that I've created it is 400 by 400 pixels and it's only 8-bit and the background colour is white and what I'm going to do is I am going to use a black brush and I'm going to decrease the size of the brush right down you can do it visually or use the sliders and it's a hard edge brush randomly put these in and once you've done that use the selection marquee and go to edit define brush preset and rename this to whatever you want if this is the first time you're creating the brushes, you can leave this document open and just create another couple of brushes. And in this case, I'm just using three dots and in the last one, just a single dot. Now, when you're creating brushes, you have to think about how the effect is going to be. Hence, the first one was random. When it comes to brushes, the best method to use them is with a tablet. But in this case, I've kept this just with the mouse to let you see. But to get your brush working properly, you need to go to Window and Brush Settings. And this is where you can adjust the brush to whatever settings you want. And if I go into the Shape Dynamics, I can change the size and the jitter of it. But we don't want that with this type of brush because it's hair. But one thing we do want, we want to take the spacing back so that there is an even flow when you're creating the brush. You can also go into transfer and we can transfer the opacity and we can transfer the flow jitter as well, depending on where you are painting with the brush. So you see the effects that we have here with those settings. And if you want and you're happy with these, you can go up to the little note in the top right hand corner and save this again as a new brush preset. Method two combines the first one with another method, right? To do this method, we need to go in and clean up some of the area and we can do this using one of the brushes that we have just created. I created a mask on that layer and now I'm painting out areas just to make it more subtle when it comes to the final application of this type of edit. You don't have to do this, but I found it useful here. Once you're happy, copy up the layer and apply the mask. From this new layer, use the lasso tool and select a part of the hair and then take the layer below the layer you've just created and move it into place. Once you're happy, you can scale it up and move it around just and then go into Edit, Transform and Warp and again, blend it in and move it around just until you're happy. Now, this isn't the most perfect way of doing it, but each time you adjust here, you will see different methods of doing it. Once you've got it in place, go up to the curves and adjust the curves until it matches your image. Then again, once you're happy with that, merge the layers together. And you can then copy up and keep applying the same methods there with warp and adjusting it and taking it through your image until you get the final effect that you're happy with. 
Now, on a new layer, we can jump back to the brushes that you created the image for and start painting in. To select the colours, just hold down Alt when you're painting and it will select colours from the hair that's already there. Combine these layers together and then go into Sharpen Unsharp Mask and get the hair to where you want it to be with a sharpening effect. Once you're happy with that, create a hide all mask in that layer and paint back in the hair. And that gives you the entire effect that you could be seeking for your image. Again, if you want to add more hair and move it around your entire image, just follow the same steps and process by copying layers, blending them and using the curves until you get the final results that you are happy with. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it allows you to see two or three different things within the mix. One, how to create simple brushes. Uh, two, how to use those simple brushes and using the brush presets and how to adjust them to get the effects you're after. And three, using the warp tool, use the hair that's already there and create it. Copy the, select the subject, bring it up onto a new layer. Copy some of the hair that's already there, place it behind it, use levels to blend it in and then go over the top with the brushes that you have just created. So I do hope you did find that useful in some way. Thanks again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.